Hello from Gardening at Duenza here in Ireland and it's January and just recently I went to visit a garden centre near here so I was on the lookout for bargains and I found one so today I want to show you two wonderful plant bargains that I picked up at my local DIY store. And here we go, I have in front of me two plant purchases which I bought very recently. And the first one I want to tell you about is, guess what? It's a hippiastrum, commonly known as amaryllis, with two big buds. And there's nothing remarkable or amazing about that. There's something that's sold very often in time for Christmas. But because we're after Christmas now, they were selling it off for $1.99. And as far as I'm concerned, two definite flowers and a clay pot to boot for $1.99 is a really good bargain. So I snapped that up, you can bet. So that's the first thing and no surprises there. And I'm just gonna put that somewhere in my house and just, well, you'll see the flowers in other videos before very long, no doubt about it. In fact, there's where it lives. Now the second thing I want to tell you about is a lot more exciting and it's this amazing Euphorbia. Now, can you see the price there? $26.99 and it's been reduced to $4.99 which is an absolute steal. And why has it been reduced to $4.99? It's because the plant has actually lost a number of leaves. And just having a look at, at it in the supermarket, in the DIY shop before I bought it, it's always a, a, an idea to have a really good look at things that are on sale. It's lost leaves, okay, but there's no sign of rot anywhere on the leaves of the plant. It's quite firm in the pot as far as I can see, okay, it's a little bit wobbly. But now if we go underneath, what you can see is, and if I put my finger in there, I can feel that the soil is moist. So what's been happening to this plant is that they've been watering it. And I don't think, I mean, it's a succulent, you really shouldn't be watering very much in, in winter. So I think that's what happened, has happened to it. Now, even if the roots are all gone on this, we all know that it's dead easy to get succulents or cactuses to regrow roots. So I think this is a really good bargain no matter what way we look at it. Now, so let's go in and have a look and see what we need to do with this. And I'll just start by cutting the plastic down here. Now, I'll just remind everybody that euphorbias have a poisonous sap that a lot of people find irritant. So, you know, you may want to wear gloves. And also that this is a very prickly plant. You see the spines on it? Okay, so um, yeah, just be careful. Now what I want to do is have a look and see what the roots are like. Tidy it up and put it into this pot here because it fits very nicely into that pot. But I actually don't want to water it in any way. So well, let's see what the roots are like. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of knock off these dead leaves. Take them out like that. And then I shall try and take this thing out of the pot without losing my fingers. Now this particular euphorbia is, <laughs> let me see, Tri Trionga. And when I originally got it, I had thought it would do in my greenhouse. But since then I've read up about it and it takes a 10 degree minimum in winter. So it's not going to do in my greenhouse over winter. It's more like a house plant, but uh, still. Okay, right now. So I suppose I should actually use the plastic to hold this plant and take it out of the pot. Okay, so we tip that like this. If you hear me yell, you know what it is. Okay, and out it comes. And right, so we can feel that the soil is moist. I can't really tell what's going on in the way of a root system yet. Let's just take some of the top soil off like this. Okay, 
Now let's um, let me just lift it up again. Actually, you know what? Now I can just use the the base. Woohoo! Okay, right. So what we can see is that the root system is not in very good order. Actually, you know, I think this has been buried too deeply in the soil, really. Okay, and it doesn't have a lot of root at all at all. You can see there's some root there, but not much. I also have a couple of spines in my fingers at this stage, which is great. Now, all of that compost sitting around that plant and getting watered, and then the plant sitting in that watery state is not good news. Now, <laughs> what has happened here is I think it's something that's been started off as a plug and then, you know, how they encourage these things to grow a lot of top growth and to flower but not develop their root system. So we have a very underdeveloped root system, but we do have roots. So I am still going to put it in this pot and I'm going to have to get a lot of sand now to fill this up, dry sand or a, a potting mix that's mostly sand. So you're gonna to have to bear with me because I thought I might reuse that compost, but that's not the way this is going at all. So let's just put that down here and let me go off and get some mix. And before I go and get the compost, what I want to do is put a, a good few polystyrene chunks at the base of the pot, just to make sure that the drainage goes really well. Ha! Huh. I remember last time I messed with polystyrene chunks, I had immense difficulty breaking them up in the greenhouse. But now, well, this one is just easier to break up. Now this, this will just make sure that this plant doesn't get waterlogged and it has good drainage, which is what we want. Not again. That's probably enough. And here I am, back from the grate outside with my mix. Now, what I've done with this mix is I've used horticultural sand, horticultural grit, and that's just to give it weight to help kind of stabilize the plant in the pot. I've also used some uh, general purpose uh, potting mix, and I've also used perlite, and that's because the other items the sand and the grit and the uh, compost are stored outdoors so they're not bone dry and as we know perlite has wonderful qualities of keeping plants moist but also keeping um, the moisture away from roots so I hope the perlite will help with that. So the first thing I'm going to do and sorry I didn't show you me making the mix but it's really horrible outside at the moment. So we're going to put some of it in here like this. And I hope I've made up enough because I really don't want to go outside again. It's really yucky out there. Now, this will be fun. So now I am going to lift this thing up. I'm going to try to lift this thing up. And just kind of position it there. Oops. Right, so. Now, I'm actually going to bury it less deep than they did in the shop because I think they buried it too deep. Yeah, I see new little growths coming out from here, but actually the plant does produce side shoots, so... Okay, now... So I'm just press this down firmly. I'm not going to water this. No way, Jose. Right, and I may actually need a bit of a stake just to hold this in position. Yeah, I'm gonna need a stake. So that's the next thing I'm gonna do. This will just stand up. Cameraman's hand. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get a stake, I'll be back. 
And here I am back again with some steaks. Now, I'm just going to position these around the plant. You know, I think I have a cage. I have a cage! Oh wait, this is, doesn't get much better than this. I have a metal cage that I think is going to fit this perfectly. Okay, cameraman's hand again, because it's out in the greenhouse. I have to go out there. Put your hand here. There. Okay. One minute. Okay, so here's the cage, but I'm not going to be able to put this over the plant. So what I'm going to have to do is post the plant through it, which means I'm going to have to unpot it for a minute. So what I really need is a piece of paper to hold this thing so I don't destroy myself. And can you tell us a bit of making this up as we go along? Right, so this is just a tissue. That's good. Right, so I'm going to take this out. Uh, sorry, roots. And I'm going to post it through the cage or the support. E -e -u -um. Making a terrible mess on the floor here. Okay, so through it goes. And then down here, what I need to do is kind of scoop out a little hollow for the roots. Oh, yeah, this is going to be so good. And just kind of bury them. The cage to hold the weight of the plant. It's just the kind of thing these supports were made for. I use them for epidendrum orchids, they're very good for that and various other plants that um, are top, hot, top heavy. Now I won't keep this cage on indefinitely when the plant has developed enough roots to support itself then I'll take it off because it's not the most attractive things really. Let's push it down there, make sure it's really firm. And then just, um, just uh, push down the compost to make sure that the plant is supported well. And yeah, okay, right. And then I just need to go around and pick off the drooping leaves as and when they arise. Now, if you have a spare makeup brush, then this is a brilliant use for it. But do I look like the kind of person who has a spare makeup brush? No. And just to let you know that the scent of Daphne on the way to the greenhouse just now to get this support was absolutely amazing. So definitely Daphne season. Okay now I think that's that's good enough like it does wobble a bit with the cage but I if I don't kind of do anything too energetic with the plant it should be it should be good enough. Okay so that's it. This video which was initially going to just show you how to uh, the, the plants I got at the DIY store has ended up being a euphorbia repotting video. Hope you liked it and well check back for lots more stuff. Bye!